Okay. Hey guys, little tech issues, but we are here. Uh, hi, I'm Dr. <laughs> Wolverton, and this is Craig Walker. We are co-hosting today. I'm so excited. We have a new guest with us, Tom Outhouse, mm -hmm. and uh, we have some exciting information to discuss today regarding the Matrix Redeemed mm -hmm. and the Immortals, Eternals. Like that is, seems to be a word that keeps coming up and around, and we'll go into that. But before we get started, just a few announcements. Please go to Swiffer.org. And jump on the website. Make sure you're getting on our letter so you know what comes. You can catch up on everything that you missed, all the past interviews on our podcast. Also, get our resources, our classes, um, lots of different things going on there. So, swiftfire.org, just grab that. Um, it looks like the internet connection is kind of weird today. So, hoping that this is working out really good. But, um, welcome. And, Craig, to say, up here today. Oh, you're breaking in and out, but I assume you said I've got anything to say. <laughs> uh, oh no, can you guys hear me okay? We can hear you, it just broke up a bit there. Don't worry about it, we'll sort it. Um, yeah, like I say, I'm really excited. Tom, it's uh, an absolute pleasure to meet you. And um, I've been listening to some of your stuff, I'm very fascinated with the things that you've got to say and your perspectives. Um, I've got to say as well, uh, there's, there's aside from the Lord of the Rings series, there's two films that are really, really like opened up my world which was brave art and the matrix those two films are like some of the most inspiring films for me so to be able to talk about these things with the guy who wrote the original uh, uh screenplay if i'm not mistaken That's right go on then give us a show there it is mm -hmm. and it was called the immortals is that right oh there's even a film score look at that and there's the date uh, this is the 1998 version december 1998 used on set by the wachowskis in 1999 can't get wow. more than that. Gold seal wow. director, copyright specialist, 128 pages, tabbed with everything from Squiddies, Jack's the Neck, train station scene with a little girl, um, agents, uh, robot like agents, everything, architect, you name it, even the wow. uh, it's all there. Well, you know, uh, go ahead, Craig. I was just going to say, I didn't know if you'd broken up again, but yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, let's go ahead. I know we talked a little bit. Um, off screen, can you tell us a little bit about the origins and then we'll go into the red bill, blue bill, how it refers to now different scenes. Um, sure. Yeah, just go for it. Yeah, if you watch the other side, the cabal, things like this, what they'll do is they'll try to release information first as a basically a stopgap or a steam valve blowing off steam. They want to make sure they control the narrative or the first ones to address it and speak first. It's shown in their films, too. So one of the things they're doing now is saying that the Matrix story was actually a documentary of sorts, that it was actually warning about the future, that it was a mix of many things. Yes. The Immortals was basically those things. We were warning through art. I was feeling I needed to make a statement through art mm -hmm. that maybe the future generations would get about what the plans are for our world by a cabal who is working together with all these organizations interconnected with an agenda they share. Now this work, the Immortals that became the Matrix, they simply mix the letters around. They do all this mixing of letters around. So you see the letters in Immortals used for Matrix. And it wasn't what the Wachowskis were supposed to use. They were supposed to use the different titles that were actually the copyright office that I can go into in a moment. So what you have is uh, the origins are whispering through art what one of the top people in the cabal was grooming me to be the face of his Christian coalition. So I was being groomed to be a top seat position and got privy to certain information that was shocking. And so the Matrix story, we can agree, a lot of people don't understand what it means. There will be lost in the shuffle on what it means. Well, it's drawn from lifted images that the Wachowskis thought were cool. And contacts are telling me all the time now, Wachowskis didn't understand this work at all. So what they're doing is lifting the images they think are cool and stealing it that way. So if they don't understand the story, they figure you can take Shakespeare or Mozart, just lift the notes, just lift these things, and somehow it will tie together. Keep in mind that Joel Silver actually says in an interview in 2003 on the set of Animatrix and Matrix second and third installments that he hopes that now they stopped shooting that it will tie together. He hopes that he used up the rest of the story. If you actually made the script and had the screenplay finished, they actually copied off what they shot into drafts or into the working scripts. They have no working drafts. They made it up as they went along. Wow. Off this work in hand, one more time, they hate when I hold it up. This work in hand, I know from context, 
this work in hand and the visual storyboard 600 page visual storyboard is what they used that's why you had a 20 foot rule that if you're in 20 feet of the wachowskis you're fired you're not supposed to see that screenplay so the origins are whispering through art what the plans of one of the top cabal members was wanting to have happen and i put it into art wow <laughs> <laughs> <Which Okay. is> that? <laughs> I mean, that, that's so. That's. I mean, what? Let's talk about starting off with a bang. I mean, um, I mean, where do you go with that? Because so many people were, were woken up by the film. Are you saying that that the the film was a a manipulation of the story you wanted to portray? Is that right? Yes. And including that astute statement you just made. Besides mm. a manipulation, a cleansing out of anything they didn't want shared. Mm. Remember how we talked in the beginning here about they want to control the narratives. They want to be the first ones that say whatever they need to do to cover themselves. Mm. So by stealing the work, they're cleansing out what they don't want aired. Wow. And so parts, it's very interesting to see what's missing besides what's in. Mm. Yeah. Well, to, can you guys hear me? Is it still breaking up? You can hear you. It's, it's bitty, but we, we can catch what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Um. Gosh, that sucks. Um. You're less pixelated now, so it is getting better. Okay. Um. The other thing that they do is they, if they present it, then it covers universal law, which is they told you, so now you, it's okay because it was it was shown to you and you quote bought it literally if you pay for it. Mm -hmm. Um. Now it's like you're you're bad. That you you know what i mean that you were told but not, and you were warned but can you go into that a little bit that's that's a brilliant i've never heard it stated that way before in any of the interviews i've done there's been so many back to back you just stated it so perfectly yes what they do is they want to be more clever they want to do that universal law you just talked about where they showed you it's your fault you're not as smart as them they put it right in plain sight and they also want the message tagged in there where audiences aren't going to help you. No one's going to care about your story. No one's going to care about your children that have been killed. No one's going to care about anything in your life. Only them. They're celebrities. You're not. Mm -hmm. And so basically, yes, that's why the inserted material goes in. So, Craig, you said, you know, what else can we go or where can we go from there? How about the inserted material? What did they stick in the films themselves? Right in the first graphic when they said all these all these entries are in the throughout the Matrix, they say the Wachowskis say the ones that they created it that you'll never figure out that you'll never know audiences you know you'll never figure it out well those first entries would be the most important one the first graphic would be the most important the first scene they shot was actually the first scene i wrote the interrogation scene mm -hmm. it goes in the interrogation scene now you, i do see a share screen option do we have share screen available on your end do you know how to enable it everything um, just went silent there we go yeah do you have Sorry. it? That's Not okay. on this one, no. I would have had don't to. Worry. Don't worry about it. Let me just point it out then to you. If you go, anyone goes to redpillrising.org, you'll see the graphics on there too. You may get notes that you can't get there. Beware of this site. They're doing anything to shut you down. That's why interruptions on this program is going to be what we've seen on every other program. Mm -hmm. Most have said we've never seen this kind of interruptions before. They don't want certain things out. This is one of the main things they don't want out. And that's not speaking from ego. That's just speaking from experience. Mm -hmm. Screen from the inside. So what you have, if you go to redpillrising.org or go to any interrogation scene from any tape from the Matrix, they can't erase these. It's it's done. The Wachowskis put these in. Mm -hmm. Go to any Matrix movie tape, DVD, you name it. Freeze frame the interrogation scene when Smith is opening a green folder. And there you go. The first entries. And what are on those entries? Well, one of the main things on there, and there's, they call it stacking. Susanna Bolgen is their graphic designer. Susanna Bolgen does a big article, a big reveal article. And it's supposed to be a cover article, but it reveals at the same time. She says that anything put in a split second is for the Wachowski's eyes only and the directors. And they, she says that these things are stacked, stacked. So you're going to have multiple entries stacked in to make sure the joke gets in by a clearance department. Mm -hmm. Now the clearance department at Warner Brothers is gonna make sure these things don't happen, right? Mm -hmm. Well, look what gets through, how well it gets through, how intact it gets through in an industry where they're very careful where they have a whole department to cleanse these things out. Stacking the entries. Now let's take a look. This is my high school. 
Central West High. Central Bucks West. Central West High. Thomas Park mm -hmm. Alt House. Yep. If you go to that first graphic that they made in the interrogation scene, and you'll notice the ambience in the shot is just, there's no ambience. As a film person, studied film myself, you have to create, you take that moment to shoot the ambience of the room so it has that natural feel for audiences. It's missing. All you hear is basically the running of the cameras. While the Neo or Keanu Reeves doesn't know what to do. Watch him from this context, understanding that he's looking around going, basically he's going, I have no direction. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. They're just opening this folder and doing the first shot for the film. Okay, I'll just look around. No idea. <laughs> now, from that context and understanding, watch that shot, all right? And they open up and they show Neo School is Central West High. Wow. Yes, it is. And that's not all. Get this, guys. It's going to blow your mind, I hope. Here you go. That's the phrase I always hear. Who's the character's name? Look at the name on the screen in front of me. Thomas A. is Neo. Now, anybody in the film industry that studied film like I did, well... You don't make two names for a character. It's going to confuse your audience. Anybody will tell you that's basic 101 film writing, screenwriting. You don't make two names for a character. Why? Confuse your audience. Mm. Why? You know, oh, it's Bob. It's Jill. No, it's Bob. It's Jill. It's, it's Sammy. You don't do it. But they did with mine to mock the author. That was their main goal because they didn't understand the work. So Thomas A. Anderson, yes. Anderson is my Scottish clan name. They did research. Now, one of the things they'll say is, Keep in mind, we're talking about the stacking here while we address this. They say, you know, why would they do this? Why would they do this? Well, if your work's worth over billions, sure. How much is it for them to research and have a research team research your background? My high school, that's easy to find. Look it up. My name, my Scottish clan name, sure. If you research my name and look back on what McAllister was connected to, sure. How about my dad's name? No problem. John A. John Anderson. John Anderson is Neo's dad on the record. Wow. She got my dad's name, my high school, and it gets better, you know, and my name and a Scottish clan name. Now, we are hiring a uh, mathematician to lay out the probabilities in the documentary being made right now. And this is driving them crazy. The mathematician is going to talk about the probabilities of having this author's high school, this author's dad's name, this author's Scottish clan name, this author's name doubled. And now there's more stacked in this entry. Boy, the Wachowskis really did want to get the joke across, right? Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, before we go with more of me, Michelle McGee, the art director, is listed as Neo's mom. Owen Patterson, the production manager, is listed as his other high school in the graphic. Wait, so wait, page. say that again. Explain that again about the Owen mom. Patterson. Owen Patterson is the production manager for The Matrix. <clears throat> He's listed as the other high school on this first graphic they shot, an expensive graphic. To complete the joke, Michelle McGee is the art director for The Matrix. Look it up. Whenever you get the time, look it up. She's Neo's mom. What do the Wachowskis say about this entry? They blame Michelle and Owen Patterson for the entries of my names and background. They don't deny it. They blame them. Mm. Is that clearing it up? We've had a case thrown by them where they brought their own attorney in with a suspended license and their own judge in place picked by Pat Robertson and Bush's team, right to position in California courts to make sure our case was thrown when it came forward. They positioned everybody in place like the art of war they claim through their contacts to make sure the case was thrown. We haven't had our case yet. Now fraud has no statute of limitations. Educate the public is what we're told, court of public opinion, and then go forward with an actual case in the venue you choose with the proof you have and the game is over. We will win. Now back to the graphic, <clears throat> stacking. Oh, keep in mind one more thing. They claim that their targets are always claimed. You'll hear this all the time. Crazy, delusional, bipolar, parent schizophrenic. Pick your poison, guys. You can't have all that. If I'm dressed like this, being able to speak and articulate like this and follow tracking of thought and come back to that thought, that's not what they claim. That is what I've been tested as was, and I'm not tooting a horn just for the point to be made. Gifted genius, tremendous empathy. That's why the work was done the way it was done. Mm -hmm. So back to the graphic, track back. I couldn't do that if that's what they said. So here we go. High school, dad's name, Scottish clan name, my name. Let's go one more. And this is the crowning jewel of all the graphics entries. My birthday. 
they were erasing me. Yeah, the government's involved. They were erasing me, so my records and my son's records were disappearing. So they changed my birthday, and the Wachowskis wanted to brag about that. Now watch this trail. This is going to be great. Think about the case coming up that will be, that will, will be based on fraud, no statutes. They put July 22nd on that graphic. My records, according to USAA insurance, that's the federal government's insurance for military. My dad was in the military and Navy. So it says that my birthday in 1996 to 1999 was listed as July 22nd. Way to go, Wachowskis. And then in Animatrix in 2003, remember when Joel Silver said he was try hoping they used up the rest of the story? Mm -hmm. This graphic on the screen in Animatrix. Seven, two, one before the 60, 59. Mm -hmm. Again, seven, two, one before the 60, 59. My birthday, July 2nd, 59. Wachowski's oh. corrected in the Animatrix, exactly. That's where the mathematician has a heyday. Now computate the probability of having all those entries. High school, dad's name, my name, Scottish clan name, birthday wrong, birthday corrected, when it's corrected in that year, 2003. And that's not all. On that, you see the four past the four. Tom Althouse was 44 in 2003. Keep in mind in the graphic in the matrix. Now this is a lot. They're counting on people to go, this is too much. It's too much. I can't absorb this. They wouldn't do this. It's a comforting thing for people. But there are critical thinkers out there that can say, is it too much? Or is it they went overboard and just cut their own throats, mm -hmm. made their own use? It's too much that they did too much. It's not too much for people to grasp. And the documentary is going to make that very clear. So in the column in that first graphic in the matrix, you have once more, let's just go over it so people can absorb. High school, Central West High. Let's just take one more look because I want to make this, draw this home. Mm -hmm. Central West High. There it is, Tom Althaus diploma. It's not Photoshopped or anything. This is the actual casing and everything. So my high school, my birthday, which is corrected later, my dad's name, our Scottish clan name, all is there. And in the column in bold writing is TA4099. Now, why is that there? TA4099. Mm -hmm. in 1999. You were 40 in 1999. Wow. <laughs> it's the Truman Show. It's the Truman Show. Take a bow. It really is. Yes. Wow. Do we hold the copyright? <clears throat> it just happened to line up all those entries with the man who holds the copyright dated pre Matrix? Yes. There it is. Take the immortals, mix the letters around, add an X, and you've got what? Matrix. Matrix. Yeah. Yeah. All about trying to be clever. Wachowskis actually have an article where they said, we failed as writers in California or in Hollywood. We have to pack our bags and leave unless we're given a project to direct. Joel Silver provided that project, Bound. Bound was the project approved to the uh, suits at Warner Brothers that the Wachowskis could at least direct if they can't write because they failed at Assassins. Another writer had to be brought in. That pissed them off. Mm. Therefore, they didn't follow the game plan. One more thing and then back to you guys. One more thing. How do they manipulate the copyright office with their insiders? Here is the assassins, the assassins, see it right there? Mm -hmm. Yep. Here's the names, Larry Wachowski, Andy Wachowski, and Dean Laurentis. Dean Laurentis is the man who wined and dined them. They failed at everything, writing, dropped out of school, failed at their painting business. Their mom said all they did was read comic books, the Wachowskis. But lo and behold, Dean Laurentis wines and dines them, promises them beautiful starlets produce them fame and money and fortune if there'll be insiders to steal the work. So here we have the Wachowskis on the Assassins, a full script. Now watch what happens. They get the Immortals. They get it from me because I pitched it to Bonaventura. And what does Dino Laurentiis do? He's just saw Dino Laurentiis, right? Here's the Immortals title. There he is again. Dino Laurentiis. Mm -hmm. Film company. An investment firm. Another film company of his, Paradise Films, that was on that Assassins entry. One more time, back to this. I just want to make this very clear. There is De Laurentiis, Paradise Films, on Assassins with the Wachowskis. Sans Wachowskis here, Paradise Films, De Laurentiis, on what title? Mortals. That's right. Yep. Look, at this. look at this. Army of Darkness and 342 other titles. No body of work. So they're, they're copywriting a, a series of titles 
to create slots in the Copyright Office, no body of work in 1995 when the Wachowski said they failed as writers would have to leave Hollywood unless they're given a project to direct. They failed at Assassins. So these investment firm and De Laurentiis is creating slots in the Copyright Office to stick what work in. What work is going to be stuck? I'm going over this like I'm talking to fourth graders because we need to do this really carefully. Mm -hmm. Look at this. This work goes in those slots by any company that wants to take it, goes in that slot. They do their rendition. Now, what happens when I show up? That's 1995, right? 1995, Wachowskis are clamoring and screaming. They want the work. So Bon, bon and Matura and Joel Silver give them an audition piece. They, call it, they actually call it the audition piece, Bound. If they prove they can direct Bound, they'll be given what? The science project, they actually said in an article. They didn't want, they had actually created Plastic Man and Carnivore. Plastic Man's about a man who defecates radioactive material. Carnivore's about somebody who eats people. Still no one wants it. They're still pushing the work after all this time, decades. No one wants it. Mm -hmm. You want the immortals. So what happens is you have now, I go to Hollywood. I resubmit. There's the immortals title. Now De Laurentiis disappears. He takes his name off it. There's the investment firm. The investment firm, remember, here it is again. Look at the matchup. With Dean Laurentiis, we have Credit Linus Bank, right? That's an investment firm claiming they created the work too with Dino. So the producer created this script. And now it's just the investment firms that created the script. How do investment firms create intellectual property? How do they suddenly get the bug for writing? But what they have there is there's the title again, Army of Darkness, and more titles because more people are interested in stealing the immortals as Bonham and Jura said, it was a big revolutionary thing when I pitched it to him directly. Who claims he's still Shepard and, and discovered the work. Here it is right here. Let's go one more thing and I'll go back to you guys. Here is Bonham and Jura, the one I pitched to, Lorenzo Bonham and Jura, I pitched this to him. And he says he's still, he's the one that shepherded and discovered the Matrix story. Mm -hmm. the immortals. Do you see all the pieces? Yeah. Now, let me just do one more cap here. The investment firms created the, uh, and thanks for those who can stay with us. The investment firms created the work they're claiming. There's all the titles, no body of work. So here's the clincher. Anyone who takes the work from the investment firms, they feel safe to steal it, their version of it, right? Because the investment firms said they created it. Every time the investment firms give it out to be stolen, they make money. They're claiming that they created it and that they own it and that they're financing it. And there's all the slots they created. Look how many slots they created. 347 slots that if you take the Immortal screenplay right here, one more time, almost done. The Immortals, I think it's important to go really over this. If you take this work with them under their claim of ownership with the investment firms, you can do your spin on it, Craig. Do any way you want to do it. Let's use an example. They'll give you one of these titles to choose from and you're home safe because the author is going to be dead. Hmm. You want any any title that hits your fancy, Craig, you can use it. The investment firms will appreciate it because they claim they created the immortals, even though I'm holding it up in my hand. And that's how you do it. You create slots. Now, there's one more entry. Warner Brothers also did one of these entries. We're getting it for the documentary. Mm -hmm. Wendy Wasserstein. Wendy Wasserstein is the Heidi Chronicles creator, a Jewish woman, a Broadway hit wonder. She was the first selection, not the Wachowskis. She was the one that they actually have a copyright entry just like this. The Immortals, under it, it has a title, Army of Darkness. And it also says, Warner Brothers, uh, Wendy Washington commissioned by Warner Brothers to write The Immortals. Really? It's not even written yet. So she was first candidate. That's why the Wachowski screamed and wanted Joel Silver to audition them to direct Matrix. And the audition piece was bound. And let's go one more thing. Who's the main character that represents Larry and Bound? Here's the answer. Violet. Who's Violet? Violet is my maternal grandmother. Wow. There's so many connections there. I mean, obviously, there's your case. Are you are you taking this further? Is, is that your intent? Oh, yes. Right. Now, they first approached us, and they made sure that I would file under their attorneys pretending to be for me. That way they got all, and they had a suspended license. The man they sent to represent me, and I was supposed to trust him, was somebody who had this. Look at this right here. This is Tony Rankin. Meet Tony Rankin from Maui. Tony Rankin, when he came to me, 
was ineligible to practice law since 1990 when he came to me in 2009, 10 years later, or no, more than 19 years later, suspended, not eligible to practice law. That's how you throw a case, then use your media. If you look me up, they'll say, he lost his case. It was thrown out. He failed to prove it. Well, this is how you do it. Send a man your way, solicits you to represent you and throw it and make sure all evidence stays out and make sure all your drafts get to Warner Brothers so they can steal again immediately as this case is thrown in 2014. Immediately when the case is thrown, the Wachowskis, Joel Silver, and Warner Brothers all announced different individual projects. The Wachowskis get this, Craig and Dr. Chanel. The Wachowskis announced at the same time the case was thrown within a week that they were they got a million dollar deal with Netflix to do Sense8, but it was too big to write down. Too big to write. So they didn't write anything down. They're too lazy. Didn't write anything down, but got a million dollar deal because they had just had my work green lighted to steal again by being thrown by their own attorneys, who all were classmates from University of Berkeley. The documentary will be blow away. The evidence is irrefutable and the fraud has no statute of limitations. Now the attorneys are scared they're gonna to go to jail. Yeah, federal prison waits you because of all the fraud, murder, extortion, the things you did, the ways you did it is all coming out. Mm. Beginning of story. <clears throat> well, and I'm gonna jump in because I'm I I'm, was just trying to look up to find the guy's name. I know when I was in Vegas and we were meeting up some people political situation um there was the, a there um who went to prison is this breaking up are you okay no. yeah it's not bad right now um went to prison and he was a, now a lawyer okay <laughs> Yeah, they do still break up your feed. They're gonna break it up because they don't want certain things said. And believe me, this is they can manipulate all the media. Keep in mind, and you'll go on a second here, Disney owns ABC News, they own um, uh, telephones, a, a Warner Bros owns AT&T and uh, CNN. And so they own everything, securities, you name it. They're mega monopolies, which isn't supposed to happen in this country, but they are. So go on, They'll, they may interrupt, but go on. Okay, um, I'm just saying that I've heard this before and I know somebody that this actually happened to where they were given a bad lawyer um, and they trusted having that lawyer um, actually did it plan uh, you know, so that it all brought, you know, even in the pop music industry, all of um, were Flynn at first a really bad lawyer, the same lawyer that got this other guy in prison regarding the Snowden um, and he warned General Flynn's parent, um, people and brother, you know, hey, don't get this lawyer, you know, fire that lawyer or you'll never see each other again. Mm -hmm. And then they got him a new lawyer and he was actually out. But it was, I've heard this before, but go ahead, Craig. Um, yeah, I mean, I, the question that comes to my mind is mm -hmm. why? Um, why didn't they want you <coughs> to take this forward? Well, that goes back to what we discussed on the phone, um, that sensitive topic about the main right. player involved. So there is a sensitivity here because there are names that to be named. Right. So we won't say the name. There's a main player in the cabal that's their weakest link. Right. And they he wanted my script cleansed because I was whispering through art and warning what his plans were connected in the cabal. That's why. Did you know this person? This person I, was, I was being groomed to be his face, the Christian coalition. I was being groomed to be his number one man. Okay. Okay. That's all. Well, I, mean, I mean, Sean L and I, we talk about this stuff because uh, we, we've both come through from, from the Christian background. Mm -hmm. uh, Sean L was, was, was heavily into uh, ministry. Um, and we, we've spoken about the, this, the level of corruption and control in that world, particularly mm -hmm. in the United States. Um, it is it's another controlled entity. That's that, that's one of the reasons I believe why they get um, tax exemptions. Yes, um, it's a form of bribery, isn't it? It is. Um, you know, if you don't toe the line, we'll take tax off you. You know, and we'll hit you financially. Well, um, you hit it. Yeah, former President Bush actually gave this party a faith initiatives influx of money mm -hmm. infusion. What he did with the first thing he came to office was rewarded this man for his support with his body of supporters by giving him the largest money ever given to a quote religious organization yeah. Yeah. the last thing bush did in office was give this gentleman a gentleman another infusion of over a million or whatever of um money they were very much tied together in this whole cabal 
So what you have is, yes, it's the, the church, they actually told by one of the people who approached me and made my life hell, said that the church, we're using the church because the church is supposed to be about love. The church is not exempt from being guilty in this. The church is being employed, just like the Masons is employed, different organizations that can help be conduits to get the deals made, to make these things go forward, and also be good shelters. The church is a great shelter because a lot of people in the church say, well, Yes, they're doing evil, but they're doing some good. Plus, the main thing this gentleman will use, using that term very loosely, is um, if you go against me, meaning him, you're, quote, dragging the church through the mud. So therefore, he shuts down a large part of the population. How many senators and congressmen claim to have faith? It's part of their profile in yeah. order to get their support. It's what you do. So it's, is it any wonder that they use the church as a vehicle and the people shut up? They don't talk because they feel they're going against God. I, I totally see that. And were you a part of a church? Is, is that where this connection came? I was at the grad school of this individual and he right. came me for his network. Right. And okay. he is the, one of the top heads of the snake of the cabal. And so I was being groomed by them to be the face of his coalition to be the public face and that should say something it wasn't about my talents so much it was about could i persuade by my eyes by the dimples i had by the young look i had and if you see the way i look back then yeah that's not bragging that's just i had the face he liked in fact i was supposed to be part of his sex ring that's connected to disney <laughs> now you see what's happening watch the feeds now they have to leak remember we said about releasing the pressure valve letting the gas blow off they're now doing leaks about what, pedophiles at Disney parks? Well, that's a PR nightmare, but they're gonna have to go that far in order to cover for the middle and upper echelon involved that is being revealed through this story. I see, I see. Now, I mean, sorry, go on, Sean, now. I was just saying, Craig, you would understand. We just did a decode of something Max and mm -hmm. Ryan Gosling and Disney, and it's interesting, July 22nd keeps coming up because that was in the code as well. Yes. And now this morning, I actually found out that John is in another movie. Um, we're playing Ken, a plastic Ken, which is the whole mannequin project and be released um, July 22nd too. So I'm wondering if there's some significance, satanic thing with July 22nd or, you know, yeah. be your birthday, but yes. also uh, it seems to be a, an important number for some reason. Keep in mind, I was being groomed. This individual right here, it's not about ego. It's about truth out. This is something I want to do to help children. I want to make a better world. That's why mm -hmm. I wrote the screenplay in the first place, mm -hmm. right? I sacrificed. I could have taken the chair. I could have taken the offers. Instead, I wrote this piece. I'm not trying to brag. I'm just trying to say, let's set the scene here. Let's set the perspective of what we are sacrificing to do. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that people will catch on, that the truth will be seen. Their strategy is put so much out there that people get flooded and go, it's too much. That's why July 22nd keeps appearing, appearing. July 22nd is the birthday they were signing to me that meant I would be killed. See, that would show up on my records. If I died, you wouldn't see my birthday. You'd see the fake birthday they put in place. So the Wachowskis are echoing what they're replacing my birthday with on records, July 22nd. It's a cover, cover thing. You would never know about Tom Waldhouse. I'd be a fictitious character that was murdered and died had July 22nd as my birthday. They put it on my records. So what you're seeing now is what just happened to my mom yesterday on the phone call and happened to other contacts that are with me. My mom was on the phone yesterday and this, this is how close they get to home. They bought up my entire family. So my mom's there supporting what we're doing, just like my dad did before he was killed. On the phone pops up this AT&T owned by Warner Brothers. It pops up these numbers. Four, 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 three, 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 five. Two. Now, I hope I got the numbers right. Now, listen to what happens. Let's look at the clock one more time. They're giving the warning. This is actually a warning. The Animatrix is a warning of a death threat. A red four means assassination. That's why the red hand is four past the four giving the age. They pack this thing. 7259, my exact birthday, month, day, and year. Four past the four in red, my age, 44. But a red pointing to the four, that's why it's not pointing to 44 on the dots. A red pointing to a four means you will be taken out in the industry. So what showed up on the phone? It's going to keep going off and on, but 
a nine, a 59, they have a five and they have three, three, three makes the nine, right? The extra three and the extra four make the seven. The two is there and the four, four is there. So you have all the numbers typing across my mom's screen of what's on the clock here, everything from the fours, the seven, the two, the nine made out of the threes, the extra three makes the extra four into a seven. Perfect, very clever boys, very clever. Mm. This is supposed to be where audiences go, no way. No, they wouldn't waste their time on this guy. No, actually they are wasting their time on this guy because I know what Pat Robertson was planning. I was being groomed to be his number one. Do you think he's gonna let that go when he's running for president at the time? No, and I'm told he'll never stop. And so I have two dead sons one last surviving son and contacts on tape saying, we, they know you're concerned for your last son's safety. Is that supposed to make me shut up and not do interviews like this? Yes, it's heavy. And hosts are supposed to go, we can't put this guy on, it's too dangerous. No, it's a miracle I'm alive. There've been many attempts on me and Aiden, hit and runs, you name it, it's been done by the main players. And they let you know it's been done. My other two sons, not so fortunate, they've been murdered. And murdered in Hollywood fashion and Mason's fashion and made very, very clear by context that I would know that it was murder, mm. and how it was in the films. My one son, Sean, was killed x file style. They had to do it that way, a snowplow. My other son was murdered Mason style. If you're a traitor in the Masons, you die disemboweled a cable length from shore. So they murdered him on a Japanese American military base in Japan in a shallows of a lap pool. They killed him Mason style and let me know. That's how you do it. And then they cremated both their bodies. Wow. <laughs> I mean, what do you say after that? But Well, we're the top of the sword. Basically, they know they work top down. If you have the goods, if you are groomed from the inside, you're traitor number one. Mm -hmm. If you're groomed by this organization and this cabal, and they're all interested in your work, and they, what do the uh, uh, CIA operatives tell me and the Masons when they approach me to join? We're fans of your work. We're fascinated by your story. They'll tell you that. Mm. It's common knowledge for the studios that this work was created and stolen, but they're not supposed to talk about it. And so what you have is, I take the fire most. Now in the media, they'll put other people up, but they don't want this in the media. Now hosts are coming forward back to back like you guys with courage and putting this on. Is the evidence irrefutable? Is it manufactured? You can go to any movie out there, any Matrix or Animatrix, you're going to see my birthday on the clock. Can't be erased. They can't get every DVD and strike it. And those entries with the high school and everything else, they can't get rid of that. It's over because they wanted to be smarter than the author. And how did I find out about it? I didn't go and find it. I was contacted by a gentleman within the side of the story department at Warren Brothers. Does it make sense? He contacted me, told me where to look and what was there. That's the only way I'm going to know for a split second upside down. Is this guy wanting to help you? Is that why he did that? He wanted to help. He didn't like the Wachowskis. They were right. arrogant, egotistical, brutal, vicious, and not that smart and they couldn't take it see i remember when um you know because uh, matrix was such a huge film for so many people um really impacted people so deeply um and then one of them if not both of them came out as transgender that was uh, the price to pay yeah yeah and i remember at the time people were like what you know how, how can these sort of awake people i say in inverted commas be so be like that and I'm not, that's not a detriment to transgender people just as a disclaimer no. but like you say that when you understand the cabal and what transgenderism means to them it, it makes sense now and I, and I heard horror stories about what they were like as people mm -hmm. I, I remember thinking at the time like how can these people who who have this genius mind to write and direct these stories mm -hmm. um be like this you know well the, yeah. Yeah. What do you mean when you said that was a price to pay? So that was like yeah, some well, kind of contract you had to do that and they didn't really yeah. want to? Or the Warner Bros. agenda. What you have is, um, this is the deal. They're not right, first of all. They failed at everything they ever did. Their mom even said so. All they did was read comic books. They're groupies for the sci-fi work. They're not intelligent. They flunked out of school. They failed as painting contractors. The question is, why did... Dean Laurentiis wine and dine them and promise them beautiful starlets and fame and fortune. A body of work. Still, Plastic Man and Carnivore is their actual work. Nobody wants it. They said in an article they failed as writers in Hollywood. They'd have to pack their bags unless they're given something to direct. They're not brilliant. Go to the interview, and I'll address your question, Dr. Chanel. Go to the interview with Bound, the Bound interview. Look up Wachowskis and Bound. Watch how they talk. 
Watch the video of Larry Wachowski and Andy talking and tell me if they could create anything, if they could even articulate what they had for breakfast. Take a look at them and listen to what they say. They are not articulate. That's one of the reasons the man came to me. So give me the question now, Dr. Chanel, and I'll address it. You mentioned that this was the price to pay, that they're yes. transgender. Can you explain? Do they yes. not want to do it? They had yeah. to? Was yeah, context make it very clear to me what's going on. They told me that Warner Brothers has two agendas. One is to show that everyone is evil in the world, that we all have evil. This is actually one of their agendas. It's put into their films. That way, think of it this way. Those that are in the cabal and got away with all this theft, intellectual property, billions of dollars, murdered, did all this stuff, that they can say, as Jerry Falwell Jr. said. What did he say when he came forward? He said he's actually one of the honest ones that got caught. Those that don't ca got caught are the ones that actually do. Everyone does bad, basically. Um, they haven't been caught because they're better at doing bad. So he makes himself out to be innocent when he's caught. Because he got caught, he says that shows he's innocent because everyone's bad. This is the cover story Warner Brothers has created in the studios, that we're all evil at our core. When push comes to shove, watch the films, how many ways they show this, in Game of Thrones, to Walking Dead, you name it. If we, at our core, the lizard in the core, whatever they're talking about, they're psych people, that we all come down to ourselves. No, we do not. No, that is not our natures. And they don't want that disapproved. They don't want that shown to be false. The other agenda is they want to promote the transgender thing, disrupt families. The transgender thing is a main thing they're doing. It's an agenda. And if you look at transgender, it actually is in the original screenplay, but it propels the story along in the original screenplay. In the immortals, that's why they wanted to use up the rest of the story. They said six transgender in Matrix. They Matrix, but it comes from my screenplay where the Neo character has to flee outside the program because he's cut off by the architect, you know, mm -hmm. and so he has to flee. And so Trinity helps him at the train station. That's why they stuck it in there. They cheapened it, made it cheaper for budget, gets them through, distracting through the liquid mirrors, which are the gates at the train station. Again, lifting images they think are cool, out of context, simplifying everything, ruining the spine of the story. But when you put it back in, it makes sense that the liquid mirrors, if you take the pill, you can pass through liquid mirrors at the train station. Now they put it in the Expanse and Prime and everything else, Stargate. So what you have is uh, he gets to the other, other world, and it's not in the program, the real world, genuine people. And he meets up with a lady who's aging. He's not aging when he was in the program. Now he's aging. In fact, in Lost, they show the man looking at a gray hair and lost and realize he's aging. That's actually in the screenplay. <laughs> they borrowed that too. They just shared it. Remember all the titles, sharing it all around, all the different titles you can take the work on. Yes, Lost took it too. They're all fans of the work. I get calls from producers saying, we're still using your style that you created. We're still using the ideas. Rehash, Chris, you know, Christopher Nolan, Interstellar, using the little girl scene that they didn't use, the Wachowskis didn't use. They didn't want that relationship and the heartfelt relationship. So Interstellar uses it, Christopher Nolan from Universal, where my work went. Anyway. So what you have is the situation where, now I just lost my train for the first time. Give me, okay, no, transgender. Transgender is in the original screenplay. Uh, the character that Neo goes to in mine, uh, she has scar tissue where genitalia was because of the rape gangs and things of the agents doing all the harm. That's how severe it gets. And so they got the idea for genderless females, genderless men. It propels the story along in mind. It's only there not for shock and be clever. It's to propel the story along about how horrible it is outside the program. Mm -hmm. And so that's what they lifted to and they decided they make it. Now the Wachowskis had to pay a price because what they do, what did they do? They did this, didn't they? Let's do one more visual. They don't like when visuals go up. They did that. So by putting my high school, my name, my birthday, and then correcting it, can you be more stupid? Go to Bound and watch that interview with Bound and Wachowskis and tell me they wouldn't do this to try to be clever. By doing that, they had to pay a price. And they didn't do this. They didn't pick one of these, one of the titles. So we have this uh, series of titles I held up right, right here. Look how many are available for them. Look how many titles are there. 347 titles. The slots are created before Matrix. They're given the work because Joel Silver gives them the audition piece with Bound, and they decide not to use one of these titles at the slots because they want to get back at Warner Brothers because another writer was brought in to finish Assassins, and they didn't like that. They didn't like that at all, so they're getting back, and that's why all the information is inserted. So now they have a price to pay. Cabal says, okay, we won't kill you, but now you got to be transgender. Did Andy want to be transgender? No. But Andy, you got to pay the price, buddy. you got to pay the price. So 
he slaps a wig on and a dress on, a black dress, not flattering at all. As He's sending a message, I hate this. I don't want to be this. I'll slap a wig on. I'll put the worst dress possible on. I don't want to be transgender. I don't want to be a woman. I'm a bar guy. But I'll be on here and do it because I'm told to. And he's asked the question on the air. You must be happy now. Are you happy now? No, not really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Andy, you paid a price, buddy. You paid a price. It's That's just viral. 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 Yeah. You always pay a price if you go against the cabal. They were supposed to pick one of these titles that would have made it clear and smooth. In goes this after I'm dead into one of those titles. Pick your choice, guys. 347 titles, all under the investment firms. Formerly Dean Laurentis, and they didn't do it. And they stuck my high school in. They they are vindictive. They are angry. They're not smart. And they actually mock the work on set. They didn't think Make Your Swamp would become popular. And then they're told to do two and three because it was. They didn't want to. And you notice Andy didn't appear in Matrix 4 because he's gone, it's too far. And what they do in it? They put the last stuff in. They put my last stuff in. The little girl on the end of my script says, um, we watched you. To Neo. They took out the relationship. That's how the, they kept the exact scene when everybody on set said blow up the matrix that why they haven't debated if they had a full script, right guys? Why would they be debating how to end it? And then Wachowski said, we're gonna keep the exact ending. What ending? My ending. And the very end, the little girl says, we watched you daddy. Neo is her daddy. And restored to her in the end without burn scars when he thought that the Smith agent actually saved his daughter way back from a burning building and she had burn scars. That's the surprise ending. You always have a good ending where theirs is voted the worst, one of the worst 11 in all time for sequels. But why, if they use, they said they're going to use the exact ending as it is, didn't it work? Because you took the relationship out of the little girl and the daddy. You took it out. In that end, it'll make sense in Matrix 4, but it'll make sense in the original work if you put back the relationship and the little girl shows up and says, we watched you. To Nia, yeah, it works then. It works. He's reunited with his daughter which this author wanted to be reunited with his daughter. And that's why I wrote the piece. And that's why they're slapping my face by putting it in there now. You won't get your daughter back, Tom. You won't. But we're going to use up even that piece where you put a cry out to her. That's how evil these guys are. Watch the Bound interview with the Wachowskis. Larry Wachowski and Andy Wachowski, Bound. Search that up. Watch how they talk. See if they can write anything. Okay. Well, one one last question, and then I don't know if um, Craig has anything. Um, this this whole thing has been very profound, and also this internet stuff is really driving me nuts. But sorry, you guys, for the tech stuff. Um, what about Sophia Stewart? I don't want to throw a bun- another wrench no in this whole thing, but no problem at all. To be the person who wrote this, and there's that whole thing too. So, what about that? Sophia Stewart sends me messages all the time. She's a handler out of USC, University of Southern California, where they draw their handlers from. Failed writers who were brought out to be first claimants. The Warner Brothers in-house Warner Brothers. They actually say well, in-house Warner Brothers witch. She has sent me message after message mocking the death of my sons. She was there first when we first came forward with their handling attorney working with him saying, you will not claim Matrix 1, you're the missing link. Uh, you claim Matrix 2 and 3, I'll claim Matrix 1, Tom Oldhouse. And says that she's a celebrity and I'll be a celebrity now. So that's what she's pushing with her number one guy now coming forward saying, yes, yeah, she played you all along. She is a person who has a 33 page manuscript, she calls it, the third eye. There's nothing in it except a bastardization of Star Wars and the Bible. It's ripping off those two things. There's nothing original at all with anything from Terminator or anything with the Matrix. So she is there to be a person to handle, steer and crush. And that's what she does. She tries to get a reaction out of any way she can mocking me for the death of my son, saying it's my fault that I was in a cult. And I've got her taped over and over. It's going in the documentary. Sophia Stewart is a plant, a failed writer who want to be. And in fact, she actually sent me a message and shows her company name and I have a copy of it. It's all eyes on me. They're calling me a narcissist and egotistical. Who names their company all eyes on me? That's the name of her company. She is a plant, an insider, and that's supposed to throw the public off. Well, it's Sophia Stewart true. claimed it first, see? But in yeah. real life, the actual author is the last to know. The actual author is the last to know. Those that stole are the ones that know first. They put forward their first claimant first. Sophia Stewart is that first claimant. Nothing. So it's just another distraction to kind of take away from what you're saying. She's a plant. So, a, so if a bunch of people came out and were like, no, it was me, no, it was me, no. Then it kind of is like, 
confused and just go like, you know what, never mind. They count on the public going, we've already heard this before. Nothing to the story. We already heard the person who claimed first. They are supposed to think that the first claimant is the real claimant. They came first. No, the first claimant is the one that's being put forward by the thieves that know they stole the work and the corporations that steal it, right? Look at all those uh, investment companies on those copyright titles of immortals. So the author is supposed to be the last to know. And before he, when he gets to the scene after his kids are killed and everything else and finally appears on the scene, you're too late, buddy, because we already had someone claiming it. We paid her, positioned her, groomed her to be that claimant. She was a failure out of USC. And that's what Joel Silver used for all her a failed director out of USC. They keep they, they go to the same alma maters so they can get the same momentum and thread going and loyalty. The same alma maters. All the attorneys used in throwing my case, they were supposed to be on my side and against me, were from University of Berkeley Law School. And if you look at the contract from the attorney, he never wanted this shown, Anthony Rankin. On the back, you see why he never wants it shown. There's a clause. I'm not allowed to get rid of him at any time. If I get rid of him at any time or don't do anything he says or the way he wants it, then it's no longer contingency. I have to pay him every expense immediately and I would never be able to get a new attorney. Mm. He never wants that contract shown. It's going in the documentary. Wow. Um, well, I mean, we're getting towards the end now, but I think... We is there, a, is there a positive note in all this? I mean, oh, yes. come on, let, let, let's, uh, yeah. I mean, this, this is drastic. I mean, obviously, we, we understand that the stress and the turmoil that you've been through. Well, let's go to the Where's this heading? Let's go to the positive. This is written on the idea that a one world is coming, a one world society. There's no way to get around it. It's going to happen. They've already mm -hmm. agreed to it. So if that's going to happen, our main character, which is modeled after me, Neo, that's why Thomas A, I had to draw as a writer off myself to be able to flesh out a character on my first door opening piece to make sure I would know how he's going to act. That's why Thomas A, because yes, I was writing about myself. That's why Neo grims himself like me, or Keanu Reeves. And so in this, the message is we can make it a good one world society. We can turn it around, take it right from them, make it good, put the right people in charge. And so what we have coming now is we reclaim this work. This is what drew out the entire cabal. Every player wanted a piece of the pie. It was worth billions. It's worth billions. Every player's come in. Now we cannot lose in court when we come forward again and with fraud, no statute of limitations. And the documentary's done. I'm passionate about it. We cannot lose. And I'm doing this in memory of my sons and for other children in the world and for the elderly. What we're going to do is finish the job and do it right. They know it. Now they're actually making offers for me to come on board under their terms. No, not accepting. We got you. We've won. Their own players are saying on tape, going in the documentary again, you've won the chess game, Tom. You're afraid of your power now because you did interviews. It was my son, Aiden, who told me, my last surviving son, do the interviews, Dad. Never stop. If anything happens to me, keep going. And on Red Pill Rising, you'll see his piece, A Father's Journey his perspective of what's happened yes a better world's coming because those of us that were groomed and selected by the other side to lead are seeing it through we're doing it because the other side didn't count on us surviving and going forward they thought we'd curl up in a fetal ball and cry ourselves to death and die or be suicided and claim that we're suicidal we're not we're doing it in memory of our loved ones that were taken and killed we're going to finish the job for others so they don't suffer the same fate we've already done the work i already have the piece it's copyrighted proven everything the evidence evidence that survived so a better world's coming we're going to win this case we're going to do the documentary the world will be woken up they'll see what's actually the good pill the blue pill they're the ones that took the red pill and made it good the red pill was actually bad in the program you're not offered this you're not offered red pill blue pill that's them making up alice in wonderland sticking in things as they make it up as they go along like the train man that ghosts uh, from ghost and the train scene they're making up as they go along and then they write the script when they're done it's actually the red pill is offered if you're offered what i was offered by this uh different groups the red pill's offered if you don't take it you and your family die the red pill's bad they took the script and made the red pill good because it's revealing them that are bad makes sense mm -hmm. now everybody talks about being red pilled the blue pill was the good one was the bootleg mm -hmm. pill so a better world's coming there's no way we're going to lose this now they can't touch us because they're interested in the other 15 scripts i have so you're going to see a golden age in a new hollywood you're going to see these people fall from power. You're going to see certain agencies, alphabet boys, we call them, being dismantled and more righteous and accountable agencies put in place that the people have a say on. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see the children freed by these organizations that have been covering, these government agencies have covered Disney and these other people that I've been talking about covering and letting them get away with it because they profited off the billions they can make off a of stolen intellectual property and child trafficking. 
Yes. So it is all coming to a great ending. Mm-hmm. The fact that I'm alive means a good ending is coming because mm-hmm. they're never going to stop. And they know that. They've offered and offered. They threaten. It's like they give me contracts in one hand, knife in the other, mm-hmm. and they're putting both forward. I'm not going to stop, guys. I'm not going to stop. I've got the proof. It's irrefutable. And all they can throw with their media is, he lost his case. And you're going to see trolls do this. He lost his case. No. If you look at what the facts are, that guy wasn't even licensed to practice law. That's fraud. Mm -hmm. That's fraud. We will have a case. And let's see what happens. Well, truly, the Matrix will be redeemed. And um, I'm, I'm believing that. And we have lots of people watching who are all sending you love and um, good vibes for this documentary and for what you're doing and for speaking out. And when is the documentary coming out? That's the thing. We're not announcing when it's coming out because it's driving the other side crazy. They believe they know all facts and everything and brag among their constituency to keep them together that they understand everything and know everything. They do not. And they'll never know when this is coming out. We're ready to go anytime, but we'll release it when we're ready. It's a second coming in the arts. They don't know what's going to happen. And the other thing, too, is think of this. They're the ones that came up with this phrase I'm going to share with your audience and you both. They said this, Tom Althaus, because they're fans of the work. They said, if you're smart enough to write The Matrix, you're smart enough to follow the trail. They really, are, I shouldn't have gone after you. Um, you're smart enough to write The Matrix. You're smart enough to write the tra- the tra- follow the trail. Yeah, so we will see it through. So the best of the best are coming together. It's not about ego. It's not about power as they are. It's about making a difference in our world so we can all finally relax, enjoy each other's company, help each other up the hill of life, and keep our children safe. And it's going to happen. happen. I'm totally in agreement with you, Sean. I just, just, I think, I think what everything that you're describing, Tom, is, um, it's the passion of our hearts. You know, um, we we've spoken a lot on this channel um, about who the cabal are, what they're up to exposing them basically um right. we've had loads and loads of guests on we've gone into very esoteric stuff you know experiences of all kinds of different things Chanel herself is an experiencer she's recently come out of some some not very nice project mm-hmm. um and and i think your story is just one that um of of, of a collection of many people who mm-hmm. there's something happening at the moment that is so globally and cosmically massive mm-hmm. this this group of evil controllers are losing and that I, th- I truly believe they're in panic mode that's why we're going yeah. through the chaos we've been for the past couple of years mm-hmm. and and more and i think politically socially economically every area of, of the, the the world of the of the matrix that's controlled us is collapsing their control systems are collapsing and it's because mm-hmm. of people like yourself who have the strength and the courage to do this and to go through with it so i, I you know for, from my heart thank you and keep going you know Keep in touch with us. Keep us up, updated. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, we've got your back. We'll support you in every way, yeah. way that we can. Yeah. And to you and your audiences, I'm going to finish this because you guys are worth it. Mm. Worth it. Their philosophy is all about power. I've been having it on tape, the context saying, you have to understand, Tom, all they understand is it's all about power. No, it's not. Compassion and power. Power can corrupt absolutely, absolute power. But absolute power with compassion does not corrupt. Mm-hmm compassion becomes that element that makes it so it becomes a power for good and that that's the the attributes of, of the leaders of this new world that you were talking about you know we're getting rid of the 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 psychopath psychopathy yes, yes. And, and and the people that are going to be um in in power i say power like you say it's not power of control it's a power of liberation um right. and uh I, you know i i truly see that people like yourselves are going to be in positions that you are going to liberate a lot of people and help a lot of people we were groomed to lead. We were groomed by them to lead. And I'd like to think that God actually groomed us too. Yeah. So we're groomed by the best, evil and good. Mm-hmm. We're groomed by both sides. We're wanted by both sides. Mm-hmm. So we can lead. We and can the choice lead. is ours. Red red pill, blue pill. The choice is ours. Mm-hmm. Which one do we take? You know? That's right. And this yeah. is the blue pill here. This is where it came from. I was writing as fast as I can. The piece was just flowing, coming through. And I had to come up with a device for how you enter the program. I don't like shots. I never liked shots as a kid. So I came up with pills. Does it make sense? I was like, why not a shot? And so I said, okay, pills. And I thought, blue eye. People said, oh, your blue eyes are good. You got such goodness in you. Blue eye, good. I was right on the fly writing. So it's like red pill, bad. And they take it and make the red pill good. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind, again, it's not this. It's not offer this or choose. That's them putting Alice in Wonderland in. Mm-hmm. What it is, is the red pill is only offered, and this is how they do it in real life. And I'll let it go with this. They only offer this in real life. 
you offer the one pill, you join them or you die, your family dies. And so that's what was, they, they made that good? No. Mm -hmm. And the liquid mirror where Morpheus has his hand, stick it in there. Again, images lifted, they thought were cool. That's how you understand putting it back the way it was. When people see the real film after the documentary, they'll see how everything connects concisely in tight form in 128 pages, which means 128 minutes of shooting time, minute a page. Mm. So we'll see how it all ties together. Blue is good. It's the bootleg pill with bad side effects, but it, if you're going to fight the cabal, you're going to suffer doing it probably, yes. That's what the blue pill represents. There will be pain. There will be side effects. It's not perfected, but you're going to find your way and solve the problem. The red pill is bad. So now the world is learning to take it out of their hands and say, we are blue pilled. They're starting <laughs> to learn now. And I'll change the name of my site since people are now ready for it. Fantastic. Thank you guys for having me on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, and thank you. And we appreciate all the people watching too. And um, we, we, I've never asked for this, but Craig and I were talking about it. Like it actually does cost us money to put this out and to do graphics and to get a producer to do all this and whatever. So if you guys have been watching the show, I'm going to ask you for a couple things. Number one, I want you to share this because I want you to get it out. Um, you know, definitely hit like, love, comments, whatever, to keep it like in, in the top so people will see it and it can get viral and people can actually see information like this. And then also if you um, can contribute in any way, $5, $1, $10, whatever, to keep the channel going, do that too. Um, and, you know, go to swiftfire.org, get on the newsletter. But Tom, how can we find you? And then Craig too, I want you to give your information because I'm sure people are, you know, wanting to follow more. I know you're on Twitter. Where else are you? And I know you have a ton of interviews because every time I talk to you, you're about to go on an interview. Yeah. So I was so funny about your call today because I was like, you know, oh, I got an interview. No, it's me. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. And I was like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're lining up incredibly well. It's, it's so amazing after decades of silence. But Craig, do you want to go first on your information? Yeah, certainly. Uh, those that don't know, uh, I'm on I'm on Facebook. Uh, I am on Twitter as well. I do follow you now on Twitter. Um, I'm a, I'm a musician. I'm a drummer for a band called Empth Ascension. You can find me there. Um, I have been in a Hollywood film for about three seconds as well. Um, I was an extra. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, well, so do we have a crystal shot, crystal falls.co.uk go and check us out. Um, and just, yeah, just connect on Facebook. I love meeting new people and talking to new people. So Tom, where can we find you? Lovely. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah, I've got the Facebook, and and uh, they've trolled it so much. Like so many people were dropped off, and they have the people appearing now to troll again. But we're maxed out at five thousand. But please go ahead and see the other pages on Facebook. You'll see uh, Matrix Redeemed. You'll see um, Tom Oldhouse Writers Page, and also uh, the one with my last surviving son on my back on Maui, and he's smiling on my back on the last day we were on Maui. And um, that's Tom Althaus also. You can message me there also, and I can make openings as openings appear. Also, yeah. Twitter, you'll see Tom Althaus on Twitter. We're getting a lot of, uh, finally, uh, traction going forward. The other side's trying to put their people forward now. Their main players are now coming forward because they're falling apart and panicking, like you said, Craig. So uh, redpillrising.org, it's not updated with interviews. Uh, it's got some old interviews. You'll see how many are struck as they try to silence all this stuff. But new interviews are getting through now. So that was where you'll see a lot of the graphics to redpillrising.org. And uh, feel free to also, you can send me an email if you want to contact me, contact me at 77 the true man show. So it's spelled out, it's a play on words, the true man show at gmail.com, 77 the true man show. And that's because many of the contacts said they you're the true man show. They put you in the true man show. So thanks, guys. Thank awesome. you. And I will put all the links for you guys too who are watching. So you can have just an easy clickable way to find Tom, Craig, myself, whatever. Um, that way you guys can can find us. But definitely subscribe. Go to swiftfire.org. I uh, appreciate everybody's time today. I'm sorry for like I guess tech issues or is it no, tech there isn't any now? <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> now that we're almost done. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to let you be now. Yeah, they're like, oh, yeah, we don't need to disrupt anything. So I appreciate everybody who hung out and stayed with it, even in the um, the situation. But, yeah, don't forget, send us a donation. We love you guys so much. We love you. And um, hope you're having a great week. And next week, we're going to be talking about sound healing. Um, and we also have a couple episodes, some of the episodes that have come out, we have one on um, – uh, sound healing we have one on help me out craig what's coming up i'm trying to even remember uh, <laughs> so many lined up. the mandela, uh, mandela effect. effect 
Yes, that's going to be fun with Journey of Truth. We're going to talk about that. And so, but yeah, just get on the newsletter and you'll see the schedule. And yeah, love you guys so much. Thank you for your time, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Craig, Thank you. and we'll meet again next week at seven, uh, at noon on Thursday. All right, talk soon. Okay, speak soon. Cheers. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.